Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to another filament dryer review. In the last half years I tested three different uh, filament dryers and uh, they're not perfect product. Always at the end of the video I give some suggestions to manufacturers how can they improve the product. And uh, here you can see the list of most common uh, issues I had with those products. And, and now what I have here is the filament dryer uh, which is sent to me for the review by Sovel company. And uh, first look at the specifications, I can see that it is a little bit closer to that perfect, uh, theoretically perfect uh, filament dryer. Uh, but uh, let's don't rush so much. Uh, first allow me just uh, a minute to explain why do we need a filament dryer. Uh, filaments can absorb moisture from the air. Uh, some filaments are less sensitive to this, like PLA, ABS, but if you live in an area with a high uh, humidity, in that case from time to time you will need to dry the even these filaments too. PETG or nylon are more sensitive to this, or flexible filaments. Uh, with PETG you can notice some stringing or even a weaker layer adhesion. <laughs> with nylon it is impossible to, get to, uh, to have good quality printing if it is not dried. And it has to be dried on higher temperatures because the drying process uh, has two steps. First we need a higher temperature to force the moisture to the surface and then area uh, around the filament must be uh, with a low humidity, so in that case that can, uh, filament can be dried. Nylon has to be dried on approximately 70 or even higher temperatures, degrees Celsius. Uh, PETG can be dried even on 50 degrees Celsius, uh, but uh, I will test it in this video too. And uh, I don't know, now uh, let's see what's in the box. User manual. Power adapter. Let's see the output 12 volts, 4 amperes. And the box is empty. Here goes the power cable and there is a display with the buttons and inside uh, I can see it can fit two regular sides of the spool or maybe one bigger spool, I will check that later. Uh, there are exits for the filaments and there are some clips so we can close it uh, to get better uh, sealing. And there is some silicon here, I think, so the, it's uh, sealed good on, on this side. Uh, fortunately, the, I cannot see some thermal insulation here on the, the walls, but uh, you can see there is a fan. Well, uh, there are no space for desiccants, but I believe the desiccants can be placed here below, because the spool will uh, sit on these uh, rollers. Quick check for the size, so I have here two regular size spools. No problems with this. And now most important question. I have this PETG, I think it's Prusament PETG, uh, one of the, the per first uh, materials I bought with uh, my Prusa printer. I think it is almost two and a half years old and uh, I bought it because uh, the same color is used to print some uh, spare parts on my Prusa printer. And this is so wide that it cannot even fit on, on in these vacuum bags I presented uh, a few weeks ago. Let's see. Okay, so it can fit uh, finally in this uh, filament dryer. And I notice one more thing. So this is the only exit for the filament and it is not always the most comfortable. Sometimes I needed some exit to the side. So it would be good if we would have some uh, other options except the top position. Let's turn it on. Hmm, these buttons are touch buttons and response very good. Ah, great. Uh, I hope it's visible on camera too. I can see the temperature and the humidity. And if I press the M button, I, I switch the temperature so I can set here 
40, 45 or 50 degrees Celsius. Hmm, a little bit low. And if I press the M button uh, again, and then I can see here the hours. 6, 7, 8 was the maximum. 12 hours is the maximum. And that's it. So the using the menu is very simple. So temperature, time, or you can see the current temperature and humidity here. So much quieter uh, with, from those filament dryers which uh, already have a fan inside because some of them don't have the fan so of course they are quieter then. But the fan is required to get some uh, air moving inside. And now let's try to dry something. In this first experiment I will add exactly 2 milliliters of water to this uh, sponge which is for the cleaning of the soldering tip. And then I will place it inside and uh, I will dry it on the maximum temperature for one hour and then I will again measure the weight. Unfortunately this experiment is not really comparable with my previous uh, tests because I use different uh, amount of the water. Well, I'll try to keep this as my standard. And actually what I want to measure is uh, the, how accurate is the temperature and humidity meter. For this I will use this HDC 1080 uh, sensor. Uh, which I found very accurate, one of the most accurate uh, budget sensors because it is independent of the uh, voltage uh, because it sends the signals through the I to C or I square C communication. Now the problem I noticed is that how can I insert this because this box completely has the ceiling around it. Uh, I'll try to place it through this uh, small hole but I have to remove this uh, I know some kind of silicone for the sealing of the filament. Success! This is the weight of the sponge and I'm adding now 2 milliliters of water but measuring the weight is more accurate. And I have one small desiccant uh, there in, on the bottom of the box. Turning on. Maximum is 50 degrees Celsius and uh, this is the time but uh, I will measure it only one hour. This is a time less of approximately first 30 minutes. Now after approximately half hours of drying I noticed some uh, moisture on the wall of the box. I hope it's visible on camera too, so definitely using more desiccant is recommended, it will help the drying process. And this is the time lapse of the second half of this experiment. Now one hour passed and I can see a lot of moisture on the walls here, so I will let the moisture out now and then I will continue with the drying maybe 20 more minutes. Well now after approximately 75 minutes I will stop the experiment and I will measure the sponge and then process the data from the Arduino. One point one three four and for the filling it's it's very dry now. Well, now I have to process the data from the serial monitor from the Arduino. Transfer it to the Excel. Ctrl A to select all from serial monitor and uh, paste into Excel. Then formatting the input and selecting the comma as a separation character. And then formatting this text, adding the time uh, column and also the values read it from the SOVAL uh, display. And inserting this graph and uh, let's analyze a little bit better these uh, numbers. So on a horizontal axis I have the time in minutes. On a vertical axis I have uh, this blue line is the temperature from HDC 1080 sensor. And this orange line is the relative humidity from the same sensor. 
and these spots here are the temperature and relative humidity uh, read it from the Sovol display and as you can see the temperature is quite equal uh, measured from the sensor and uh, from the Sovol display uh, now uh, the relative humidity uh, actually I started to record after two minutes so uh, properly it started from the same spot and then it separates here a little bit more uh, I believe that the main reason is that the HDC 1080 sensor was approximately 3 cm above the sponge and the Sovol humidity sensor, well I'm not sure where is the exact location but probably it is somewhere on the bottom of the box and here I opened the box to let the moisture out, you can see the humidity dropped down and because the temperature is still high there and then it came back to the previous uh, value so I believe that the, the temperature uh, reading works fine. About the relative humidity, I'm not sure from this experiment, but anyway, it can be useful because from these values, uh, we can have the reference from the previous measurement, for example. So we can know if we have to replace the desiccant uh, or something like that. So this is my next experiment. Approximately, I unrolled here 10 meters of PETG filament and I will left it in the water overnight and tomorrow I'll try to print something with it then dry it and uh, print again I'm not even sure that uh, it will be printable after this uh, overnight in the water but uh, we will see tomorrow and it's morning and I will try to print with this PETG something but the most important for PETG is a stringing test because uh, that's one of the first things you will notice if the filament is not dried Wow, I know it will be stringy, but not this much. So uh, now I will try to dry this filament uh, on maximum temperature of 6 hours and then to repeat the printing with the same G code. And now, first, I want to measure the weight before the drying 14.18 grams. And I have three small uh, silica gel bags inside. And I also want to record the power consumption. Currently in this room is 26 degrees Celsius. And here I have this power meter and only this filament wire is connected. It is 20.14 kilowatt hours. And I will see what will be the value in six hours. Interesting, after more than one hour, uh, I'm surprised how much moisture is on the walls. <laughs> I didn't expect so much uh, water to be evaporated from this uh, filament. It's only 10 meters, but... Uh, Yes, it will be interesting to measure the weight after the drying. One minute remaining and you can see 50 degrees Celsius at 39% is the relative humidity. And currently the state on this parameter is 20.35. And here you can see the equation. And this is the cost for 6 hours of drying. Well, at least here in Hungary. The timer turned off the heating on the filament dryer, but the display is still on. And now I can measure the weight. Fourteen point fourteen grams. And this is the picture through thermal camera. You can clearly see the heating elements. They are below this uh, plastic grid. And I also noticed that the power adapter also creates a lot of heat, 52 degrees Celsius. Yeah, but I can hold it, okay. And uh, another source of heat I noticed is here on the display. It is also approximately 51 degrees Celsius. Unity 260B. I really like this camera for this kind of work. And now printing with the same G-code.
Okay, it's not perfect, especially here at the end when, when the nozzle moved very quickly from one side to the other. But uh, compared to this one, <laughs> I can see improvement. So, any questions? And now the conclusions. Well, the solar filament dryer is uh, good enough to dry PLA or more important uh, PTG. 50 degrees Celsius uh, is not enough to dry uh, nylon in some reasonable time. Uh, but uh, definitely, I think what I like with this filament dryer are finally we have the temperature and humidity meter here on the display. The humidity meter is important, you know, if you have to dis uh, replace those uh, desiccant uh, you place inside. It has a fan and a bigger space uh, or two regular spools can fit inside as you can see now or uh, I have some wider spools, uh, PETG it really requires uh, a drying and it can also fit inside this uh, filament dryer. It's the only filament dryer where that spool can fit inside uh, in all others, uh, no, because they are too small. Things for improvement, well, yes, uh, for example, it would be good to have some above them here, so the filament can go inside the printer uh, with less contact with the air. It would be good to have some kind of thermal insulation here on the walls. And yes, it would be good to have higher temperature because uh, uh, 50 degrees Celsius, maybe the DC power is not enough for uh, for higher temperature, maybe directly the AC power would be better like with those uh, food dehydrators, Dehydra dehydrators, this here. But definitely uh, from all filament dryers I tested so far, uh, I think this has the best performance. And uh, you saw my last experiment, so even if you have some very old PETG or you completely ruin the filament, you forget it outside or something like that, uh, even in that case it could be saved with uh, even this filament dryer. Thank you for watching and happy drying. Bye.